Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy. How do you like that one? There are prophets that are prophesying, and Ezekiel go up and prophesy unto them. It say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. All right. So there are prophets that are prophesying of their own hearts. God tells Ezekiel, the man of God, prophesy to them and tell them, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God. Woe unto the foolish prophets. That's kind of interesting because when you look at scripture with scripture, one of the places you see fool in the Bible is the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And these prophets are prophesying not of God. That follow their own spirit. That's another thing. Now the Bible will tell you if it's the Holy Spirit. And the Bible will be for sure to tell you if it's an unholy spirit. But the Bible says own spirit. So these prophets are not prophesying of God. They're not prophesying of Satan. They are prophesying of their own will. They have put themselves into the ministry. And that's the three aspects even today in the ministry. God put a man in. Satan puts a man in. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And man has put himself in. John tells us in 1 John, we got to weigh the spirits. And have seen nothing. That's interesting. So they're prophesying in, of their own. And there's nothing to been revealed to them. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. It's just... You know, foxes do damage to the vineyard. And the vineyard is the house of Israel. And the foxes are in the desert. They're going to be more ravenous because there's not that much food. Pray. You have not gone up into the gaps. That's a mediator. When, when God said to Moses, no man can see my face, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. So none of these prophets are reaching out to God for the people. They don't care. They're in for their own prophet. P-R-O-F-I-T. Neither made up the hedges for the house of Israel to stand in the battle of the day of the Lord. They have not set forth a way. A hedge is, you know, you can't go left or right. When I grew up where I lived in New London, a hedge was a fence. This is my property. This is your property. So they're not helping the people. They have seen vanity. That's nothing. Emptiness. And lying divin divination. Well, Satan's the liar. But if they're of their own spirit, verse 3, They are knowingly lying to the people. And there are ministers and priests and all kinds of religious heads. 
and unreligious heads that are out for their own being. And we got this in the realm of religion, we got this in the realm of politics, and we got this in the realm of consumer. There are people out there who lie to sell their product. And in the end, their product is just nothing. There are politicians that will lie to get your vote, and once they get in office, nothing. And there are men in the ministry that will lie to you out of whatever podium, pulpit, whatever they speak out of, and then at the judgment, either judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, nothing. The Lord saith. That's what I'm saying. The Lord saith. And the and the Lord has not sent them. They are liars. Oh, the Lord laid on my heart for this message today. The Lord has laid on my heart for us to do this. The Lord has laid on my heart that we should. The Lord has, you know, spoken to me. I've heard him. Now, there's a difference between men who God does send. And there's a difference between the men that God don't send. you got to weigh them out. You know, God only gave us the Pinocchio nose for lying. But he didn't. If God would only give us that... that Hail the devil when there's a devil in the pulpit. But he doesn't. You say, well, what's the standard? How do I know? When the Bible says to read and study your Bible. So you're not to be made ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. If that man says something's against the Bible, what's the chances are? If those people do something that's contrary to the scriptures... Where do they stand? When Jesus said, go in the world and preach the gospel, and they got all other kinds of ways other than preaching the gospel. Now, I'll tell you, number one thing would be about these men that of their own spirit. It's all about them. I know a man in the ministry, and everything to do with that ministry has his first name, his initial, and his last name. And that when you support missionaries out of his being, when you get your bank statement, it's even in his name. And the ministry shirts have got his name. The WWW has got his name. That's ego. That's pride. That's of yourself. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. So there are people listening to these prophets. Waiting for a sign for the Jews require a sign. And what they say usually doesn't come to pass. Or what they say is so broad anything could. You know, my prediction today, somebody important this year is going to get married. Well, okay. They're going to be in, there's going to be somebody in high society and he's going to die by the end of the year. Well, of course that's going to happen. But we'll look in a moment. They are actually making a bold statement. Have you, have ye not seen a vain vision? Empty. That, that vain vision would be like, just close your eyes. Oh, I see it. No, you don't. And I gotta wonder if this is the same thing that when Jesus said to the Pharisees or Sadducees, the blind lead in the blind. 
have you not spoken a lying divination? This is what the future beholds. And there are religions out there, including Baptists. Well, Jesus Christ is going to come back in 1988. Well, Jesus Christ is going to come back in 1989. Jesus Christ is going to come back in 1914. Jesus Christ is going to come back. I just want to let you all know that I am Jesus Christ. I am the Messiah. And Jesus and Paul and Peter they warned us that there will be many false prophets, and here they are. And Jesus said that the Antichrist is going to be so powerful that he might even could lure the elect. Whereas ye say, the Lord said, albeit I have not spoken. So what's the difference we have here between Ezekiel and Jeremiah, Isaiah, what's all the prophet? Thus saith the Lord, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, that is God speaking. Here are these men, well God spoke to me, thus saith the Lord. The Lord spoke to me, the Lord gave me a dream, whatever and ever and ever. So there, even today, there are two avenues of people speaking. Those of God and those of not God. And those of not God, they could be speaking of Satan or they could be speaking of themselves. So you got three aspects. And it's up to you to rightly divide. And there's, there's in the, the scriptures that God says, I call for a lying spirit. I sent the lying spirit unto the prophets of the king. Why? Because that's what the king wanted. And many times people will get their lie. They will get lied to because that's what they want to hear. Well, how are all these people in the religion deceived? That's what they want to believe. They don't want to believe the truth. It's the one of the hardest things of God is he will give you a religion that you want, or if you don't want a religion, he won't give you one. God has set forth the Catholic Church, so you want to believe in all that nonsense? I will send a preacher, I will send a gospel track, I will send something to tell you about the gospel. All right, now it's your choice. Believe it or don't believe it. Now, everything of your church hierarchy, the Pope, the Cardinals, the priests, the, the tradition, they all defile the scriptures. I, I, you know where they stand. That's kind of hard in the Baptist church when you got a guy up there with a King James Bible, sorry, the Bible and... And you got to study him out. It doesn't take a week. It doesn't take a month. It takes years. You got to listen to them. It took years for my wife and I one time for a preacher to realize, you know what? That story didn't sound right. That guy's told the story over and over and over, but it changes. And then he was pleasing us with cruelty. Well, you got to try them out. You got to pray about it. And you got to upset some heads. And there are times that people are going to say, Thus save the Lord. And God said, no, I didn't. And there'll be times that people say, thus saith the Lord. And God said, yep, that's what I said. Scripture was scripture. <coughs> Two, no, excuse me. When I preach on the streets the gospel, hell, heaven, death, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, religion, I'm speaking the truth. So, well, it's not what my preacher says. Well, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> well, 
For thus saith the Lord God, God, because ye have spoken vanity, nothing, emptiness, and seen lies. So they have seen something of their own imagination. And their words are nothing in their A man will lie to you. Let God be true, every man a liar. These men are purposely lying to the people to get the voice of the people, and that's religion, that's politics, and that's commercialism. You say, well, how does the commercialism, how do they lie to you, Stiley? All right, here's this hamburger on the screen, and it's lipstick. It's wax. It's been held together by toothpicks. It's been spray painted. It's been airbrushed. You want to know what the pickles are. And then when you go down to the fast food restaurant, you order that hamburger. I found out when I worked for the donut places, you know, they, they come flying down. I seen this on the screen. I seen it. I got to get it. And they get it. And they open it up. Well, that's not how it looked on the TV, you know. You know. They lied to you. And here are men in religion lying to the people. And there, there are going to be people at the great white throne judgment and even at the judgment seat of Christ. Say, you mean there are people who lie? I would never believe my pastor lied. What do you mean? And then open your Bibles to Ezekiel 13. <laughs> I don't like the Old Testament. Well, then that's why you missed. You find the same thing in Ezekiel 13, you find in the life of Jesus Christ. He dealt with liars all the time, called Sadducees and, and uh, Pharisees. You've got to understand, and many people will hear this and they won't believe it. There are liars in the, in the ministry, and it may be who you're listening to. No, well, not my pastor. He's the greatest pastor in the world. Pray about it. And like James said, when you pray about it, don't ask wavering. When God said, when, when God, when that guy gets up there in the Greek or, or messes up in the doctrine, well, you know, it's just a technical issue. I'll let him off this time. I'll let him off that time. I'll let him off. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity. Look, look at verse 8. They spoke vanity and they seen lies. Now they see vanity. Everything of their seeing and everything of their speaking is vanity and lies and lies and vanity. And Jesus said, wherefore by their fruit you should know them. You got a man in the podium or in the pulpit, whatever your church or organization is, and he's lying to you, including Republican and Democrat. Friend, you got to pull out. And you can't just say, well, you know, the Republicans are all, and then the Democrats, and the, listen, they're not all right. Not all Baptists are right. I know one. Okay, you know one. And how many to that one? They shall not be assembled of my people, Israel. They're not going to be gathered with the children of Israel. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. That's Chronicles. I don't mean the book of Chronicles. That means their name written... Ezra and Nehemiah records a list of names and places of, of numbers of people who come back. These false prophets are not in that list. And it also could go so far as to be in the book of life. Their names are erased or never put in. So when they stand at the, at the great white throne judgment, all right, no, I don't see your name. But Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? 
He had to part from me. He worked with him nickly. So you got to read the Old and the New Testament. you got to read them together. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. Well, they're coming out of Israel. They're going into captivity. So their names will not be found or their numbers be listed in Ezra and Nehemiah when they give the account, the Chronicles. And you shall know that I am the Lord. There is again. How shall you know that I am the Lord? Your name is missing in the Chronicles and possibly the Lamb's Book of Life. Or the Book of Life. When you're standing at the great white throne judgment and your name's not in that book, you better realize that that's God. That's God. That's too late. Because, even because they seduce my people, Um, in Acts, it was, I can't think of his name now, but it was that man going about seducing the people that he was a god. And then Philip came along and preached to the people and they got saved. Saying peace. And there was no peace. There's no peace coming. The very fact that Babylon is going to come and destroy all and take them to Babylon, uh, your prophecy is wrong. And one built up a wall. Now a wall is a foundation in the Bible that protected the cities. Most major cities had a wall and had a strong wall. And lo, others daubed it, and that's to be tempered with untem untempered mortar. It's not strong enough. Say unto them that dog that was untempered martyr, the martyr is not strong enough, that it shall fall. So, what the work and what you put in to do is going to fail. There shall be an overflowing shower, rain. And ye old great hailstones shall fall. And a stormy wind shall rend it. And this is like that Jesus says, a man that, that, that does not do what I say, does not keep my saying, is a man that built his house upon the sand. And when the winds came and the storms blew and all, great destruction. Well, you know, again, I don't read the Old Testament. We just saw the New Testament and the Old Testament. Lo. When the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the dove and wherein you have dove? Well, how did it fall? You used the wrong material. You have listened to the wrong man. Men, if you count Jeremiah, should have listened to Jeremiah and Ezekiel, not these other men. But they said, thus saith the Lord. Okay. You're going to learn in a hard lesson that their peace does not come true. But you don't want to hear the judgment of Jeremiah. You don't want to hear the wrath of God of Ezekiel. You don't want everything to be hunky-dory great. It ain't going to happen. That's why evolution is so popular. We're getting better and better and better and better and better and better. <laughs> You gotta wonder if these evolution teachers in, in their classrooms are kicking themselves in the butt saying, I hope no one sees, hope no one sees, because it's not getting better, it's not getting better, it's not getting better. I just lost my job because I wouldn't take the shot. I realized that when I was in school and I learned that later, the guy that taught me evolution is the guy that wore glasses. Oh, you're getting better. You're probably dead now. If not, you're going to be dead.
Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. There shall be an overflowing shower in my anger <laughs> and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. Why? Because you've been listening to the wrong people. There are people, listen, I'm serious. They're going to, they're saved. They think they're going to wear a crown in heaven because they mowed the lawn at their church. There's a special lawn mowing crown. Only the elect mowers. You say, you know, I don't believe that. You haven't been around. They care more for the lawn and the trees and the fertilization and the and the, the, the pest control than they do about lost souls. And when it is lost souls, come to my church, come to my church, come to my church. We're going to have a movie night. We're going to have a fellowship. We're going to have a cake social. We're going to have an ice cream social. We're going to have programs. We're going to have gizmos. We're going to have gadgets. Carnival. And there are people who think they're going to go to heaven. They're going to get rewards by the lies they've been taught. I mean, there are people going around, press one for English. Press one for English. But then when your preacher gets up, oh, in the Greek and in the Hebrew, press one for English. I had a pastor get angry with all the Facebook posts I do. You know, since I left that church, my Facebook posts have gotten better and less. So God's angry. God is angry at these false prophets of their own will, and he's mad at the people for listening. Because you have a free will to do right, which throws in the garbage can... Uh, Man, why is it every time I come to my head, it won't come to my tongue? Um, Calvinism. Because if Calvinism is right, and these are God's people, they're all going to be saved, and they're going to be happy, hunky-dory. No. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and the go. Ezra and Nehemiah, men that love the Lord are in Babylon. <laughs> Ezekiel's in Babylon. So I will break down the wall that ye have dubbed with untaper mortar. That's funny because the, the, the Chaldeans break down the wall, but God says, I do it. Don't blame the Chaldeans. Don't blame China with COVID-19. That's God. Well, China, yeah, China did it, but God said do it. <laughs> so Satan, okay, they, Satan got God's permission. God still allowed it. Well, you know, I'm not going to take the, I'm not going to take the vaccine and all that. And then when you die of COVID nineteen, you get to heaven, you realize you idiot should took the vaccine, you would live longer. Well, you know, because it was President Biden, it wasn't Trump. You mean the liar? Divorced three times and bankrupt his businesses six times, man. You mean that one? Nope, oh, I just lost a whole bunch of people that time. Now discover the foundation thereof shall be discovered. That means it's going down to the very dirt. God is going to rip it apart. It shall fall. Well, it fell in Jericho. Because the sins of Jericho and because the sins of Judah, your wall is going to fall. And you better believe the walls of America don't have walls. You better believe the walls of America are going to fall or God's going to have to apologize to Judah and apologize to Jericho. And you shall be consumed in the midst thereof 
You shall know that I am the Lord. There you go again. How do you know it's this? When Jeremiah writes Lamentations and Nehemiah takes his little donkey ride, he says, I can't go any further because the place is just so, nowhere my donkey could go. Okay, what do you say? You shall know I am the Lord. When the Chaldeans do a thorough job of destroying Jer Jerusalem, okay, I'm God. Ezekiel was right. Jeremiah was right. Oh, the ones that I was preaching to are dead in hell? They shall know I am the Lord too. They're in hell. God's cruel. Why? He sent them Jeremiah and Ezekiel. What about the babies? What about the children? They're over there getting firewood for the queen, for the uh, for the mother, for the, uh, the queen, or whatever that stupid goddess is, Mary. You ought not be worshiping the queen of heaven. How do we know? Jeremiah told you not to. How do I know my religion's wrong? He's, I send a preacher every Saturday morning to you at the farmer's market, and you hear about the falseness of preaching. Uh, he didn't know he's talking. I didn't like him. He was too loud. I, I don't care. You know, I think when we get to heaven, I think a lot of these voices of these prophets, they're going to be quick, because they spoke loud, and they didn't have the amplification. Wouldn't it be funny if we got to heaven and realized that Jesus had a squeaky, loud voice? You know what they said about Paul's voice? They said, boy, man, his voice is, ugh, and he's boring. One guy fell asleep out of a window. They'll be expecting a mighty, wonderful Paul. No, a short little guy with a, with a crooked nose, with a brand new body. And you shall fall, and you shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall. Once you break that wall down, here comes the Chaldeans. Babylon, you want to read? Be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever man so that he shall also reap. They're going to go under your wall. By the way, where's the wall of Babylon today? Uh huh. You tore the wall down in Jerusalem, God tore your wall down. I will accomplish my wrath upon the wall, upon them that have daubed it with untimed for my, those who did not do the job correctly. Ooh, you're in trouble. God will take you to court, and you're not going to pay with money. I will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. So what's the evidence of God? Where's your wall? Uh, go on. To wit, that means to know, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her. All right? Peace, peace, peace. God says, Ezekiel, there is no peace, save the Lord God. And we read in the last chapter, God says, that's it, I'm done, I'm finished with you guys.